So hello, I am Kathy Adams Clark, and this video is um, a gift to one of my photography students, Susanna. And I wanted, she asked me a question about, okay, once you do basic processing on your landscape photos, then what can we do from there on? What, what, what are the possibilities? And as, as with many photo, photographers starting out in landscape photography and also in processing in general, they don't really know what the options are. So what you just saw is my basic processing. I open the photos in Bridge and then move them into Adobe Camera Raw. For those of you in Lightroom, that would mean you open them in Library, and then you highlight them and you click the Develop module. And then I always start with Texture. That just enhances the, the texture of the rocks and the waves and the clouds. I add Vibrance to about 29 or 30 percent. Those are the undertones in the photograph. I add saturation to about 20 or 30 once again. Those are the high tones in the photograph, the jewel tones, the real sparkly colors. I can, and if you noticed also, I did that as a batch. So I highlighted all of them and did them all at one time. So those of you who aren't doing batch processing, you're really missing out on one of the great tools in the Adobe products because I took 20 photos at this beach on this top photo and I should be able to do it at least basic processing, texture, vibrance, and saturation on all 20 of those at one time. It, you know, if you're photo, if you're processing one photo at a time, you're really wasting a lot of time because the Adobe products, Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, have built in this batch processing. So you should be doing that. So I've done the basics. And now it's time to look at this photo and decide what I'm going to do to this photo individually. I'm going to turn on my highlight indicators on both of these. These are the little boxes right up here on the top above the histogram. You notice that when I did that, I got um, a red highlight warning showing right here in the sky. That's telling me that that area in the sky is not showing any details. So if I turn the highlight indicator off, you see it goes, that red warning goes away. Turn it on, the red warning comes back. Where I need to worry about this is where if I run my cursor over this and see these little numbers that are going to appear right above my histogram, see right there above my histogram, if any of those numbers show me 255, 255, 255, then that's telling me that that information is totally blown out. There is nothing. But as I'm running my cursor over there, then I'm not seeing any 255s, 255s, 255s. This is really important for those of you that are printing because wherever it's 255, 255, and 255 in the red channel, green channel, and blue channel, you won't have any ink hitting the paper. So you always want to make sure you've got ink hitting the paper for those of you doing printing. So that tells me that I don't need to worry about these highlight indicators right here on this photograph. I do, though, need to start being concerned because I've got a whole lot of darkness down in here. So what I'm going to do, checking my histogram, the left, excuse me, the right corner of the histogram, it goes all the way to the left, to the right side. I'm sorry, the right side of the histogram goes all the way to the right side. That means I captured all my white tones, my light tones in this photograph. So I could move the highlight slider, excuse me, the exposure slider over a bit to bring the photo out, but I don't need to do that because I exposed properly in the field. So I don't need to move my exposure slider on this photo. I also don't need to move my black slider because my histogram goes right to the corner of the black side, the left side. If you notice, if I move my histogram to the left side, you'll get blue warnings telling you that those are puddles of black ink. So once again, I don't need to move my black slider. So that means I'm going to work on this photo between my contrast highlight shadows and whites. I've got a lot of darkness going on in here, so that means I'm going to pull my shadow slider over just a bit, not a whole lot, and it's working on the front area down by the, the sand. 
So I can pull this over, but you notice if I pull it all the way over, I don't get any detail showing up on those mountains. I get a little bit of detail. You all probably can't see it on the screen, but I can see right in here that now I have some detail on the, on the mountains. So that's a good thing. So I've got a little bit of detail on the mountains in there. Um, and then I just noticed something too, that when I pulled it in, I've got a little tiny bit of camera movement, but not too much. Anyway, so now what do I do? And that was Suzanne's question is, okay, so what do I do now? So things that we can do right now to improve this photograph. Um, I have already done the optics and that is now um, an automatic correction in the 2022 version of Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. So we don't need to do that. If you're using an older version, then you need to um, click your optics and that'll correct any bend that you might have in your wide angle lens. So going back to my basics tab, we can make sure that our horizon is straight. That's a good thing to do. So make sure that the horizon is straight. Yep, horizon straight, so I don't have to worry about the horizon being straight. And so what else is there to do to this photograph? Um, for right now, I'm going to say probably not too much, but I'll come back to it in just a moment. So that's kind of basic processing for a landscape photograph. But let's look at this landscape photograph. Now we've got a little bit more that we're going to have to do. So first of all, let's go back. We've already got texture, vibrance, and saturation set. You will notice that there are no red highlights from my exposure slider because my, my um, histogram goes all the way to the right-hand side. If I tried to brighten up that foreground area with my slider, then there's a possibility with my exposure slider, then there's a possibility I'm going to blow the sky out. So I exposed for the sky, making sure that on the back of my camera, when I took this picture, my histogram went all the way over to the right corner. But the foreground is noticeably darker, and you see that I've even got some blue highlights when I blow it up to 100%, telling me that there's puddles of black ink right there. So that means I can move my shadow slider, excuse me, before I do that, that means I can move those blue highlights. That means I can move my black slider to where those blue highlights go away. So now I don't have any of those blue highlights anymore. Got a couple in there. Let's go ahead and kick them all out if we can. Bring it back to 50%. This area is still on the dark side. So let's pull out on my shadow slider. And that's what I was looking for. That's what I wanted to bring out when I took this photograph. I wanted to bring out this little red house right here when I took this photograph. Um, so that shadow slider does an amazing job on things that are in the darkness. So that's there. And let's make sure that our horizons are straight. I am notorious for not having a horizon straight. And so you just simply pull that little level tab across so we make sure that we get our horizon straight. Um, so with this one, looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go in and pull out a little bit of dehaze because the dehaze kind of gets rid of that moisture that's in the air. And I can do a little bit more clarity and clarity just brings out some details so if you notice in the foreground now the details on the vegetation has been brought out so what we end up getting is a before and after shot um, and you see that i didn't move too many sliders and i didn't do too much that was crazy so with a few movements of sliders then i did something that was kind of interesting with that photograph Next photograph, let's look at it, do exactly the same thing. You see that my histogram goes all the way across. My histogram goes all the way across. That means I don't need to move my exposure slider or my black slider, but I'm really kind of missing a lot of detail from, in my opinion, from these clouds up here. So I'm going to take this highlight slider and I'm going to bring it down. And that highlight slider, when I bring it down, brings out those details in those clouds. And you can be aggressive. I did a proper exposure so I didn't blow out my clouds. I made sure my histogram went all the way across. But what I knew I could do 
was pull that highlight slider and bring that out in a lot more detail. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with clarity because we've already done our texture. Let's do the same thing with dehaze. And with dehaze, you notice that I'm starting to bring some information out. And then let's pull out a little bit of detail in those mountains, just a little bit, not too much. There you go. So I'm kind of playing between the shadow slider and the dehaze slider to get it to where I want it. And then you'll see on the before and after that that's what we get. So not too much movement of too many sliders, just a little simple before and after. There you go. You want to do something really special with this image though is this following image. I took that same image and I moved it into Nick, N-I-K, software by DxO, and I used the color effects to detail extractor. And it brought out all of this detail in these really beautiful clouds and brought out all this detail in these great mountains um, with the glacier carving. So it went from that to that by simply bringing it in to Nick Software, N-I-K, once again, by DxO. So the last image that I have to share for you is, um, once again, histogram goes all the way across, so I don't need to move my exposure or my black slider, but yet this thing really does appear pretty dark. So I'm going to go ahead and just move it over just a little bit, not too much on the exposure. Exposure brightens the entire image. Black darkens the entire image. But now I'm going to go ahead and pull those shadows out. And notice how much we can pull out with those shadows. I'm going to pull down those highlights just a little bit. Add a little bit of clarity, a little bit of dehaze. And then this area down in here, I really want to bring out. So mask, I'm going to go over to the mask tool, go to linear gradient, and on the linear gradient, I'm going to pull it up like this on this foreground area. And you notice it's, it's um, more intense at the bottom and less intense at the top. And now I'm only working on this area of the photograph. And I'm going to lighten it up just a bit. There you go. I'm going to go in and I am going to... Ooh, add a bit more golden because we've got gold on the bottom and blue on the top. And then I'm also going to add a hint more saturation. And then on this foreground, I'm going to bring in more texture and I'm going to bring in more clarity just on this foreground area to bring out this detail in these, in these um, patterns. So once I've done that, I can move this whole thing up just a little bit more to bring it in a bit more on this area right up in here on the photograph. And then go back to my basic tab, boom, and that's what I get. Once again, a simple little before and after shows you what I got. So I hope that that helps you out. You notice that I didn't do anything real extreme because I can talk about extreme things later on in another video, but this is just to move you a bit forward from basic processing in landscape photography. I'm Kathy Adams-Clark. I hope that you liked this video. If you have got any questions, why don't you post them down in the comment section and I'll answer them for you. And if you like this video, be sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. And then if there's a specific area that you would like to see me do a video on, please feel free to send me an email at my email address or post it in the comments below, and I'll try to tackle that in the future. Thanks very much. I'm Kathy Adams-Clark. Thanks for watching.